the arrival of tape recorders meant even the most basic sounds could be transformed. Experimenting with music was no longer the monopoly of the imaginative musician. Even the earliest of tape recorders could manage quite happily the faithful reproduction of three notes twanged on the piano. It was the possibilities for unfaithful reproduction which also caused excitement. On this length of tape are those same three notes. If I wind this piece of tape through the machine by hand, at a speed which isn't constant and in a direction which is forever changing, those three twangs become a collection of quite different sounds. In fact, if we re-recorded this performance on another machine, I might end up with a sonata for three notes and tape recorder. And I wouldn't be the first. But let's take this creativity a stage further. Let's find the start of the last note. There it is. I'll cut the tape there. Now I can take the end note, turn it the other way round, and put it back, ready to join up. So, what have we got now? Our first two notes are still the right way round, producing a boing sound with a quick start and a slow finish, or what musicians call sharp attack, gentle decay. But now we've turned the last note the wrong way round. We've got the decay first. Now it's become a sound. And if I finish the joins here, it should sound something like this. Crude stuff, you're probably thinking. But to some people, the possibilities of doctoring natural sound using the new magnetic tape became an obsession. In 1958, a reluctant BBC was forced to allow a tiny group of enthusiasts to get some gear out of redundant stores and establish itself here in two rooms in London's Maida Vale. The Doctor Who theme, just one of thousands of signature tunes, special effects and pieces of background music created by the Radiophonics Workshop since 1958. At this time, all over Europe, it was fashionable to make music out of the most unlikely things. An old lampshade, an empty tin can, anything that could make a sound could be doctored by the tape recorder. What have we got here? Box of gravel. Beautiful, beautiful. Something else? Heaven knows what this is. That makes a good noise. We need a basic rhythm, don't we? Or how about something as mundane as a metronome? That should keep things going. What else could we use? One defunct alarm clock. Gotta have possibilities in it somewhere. Now add all these bits together on a tape recorder. Play some of them backwards, some of them forwards, some at the wrong speed, and this is what you end up with.
Take one cash register, give its sound a similar treatment, and you have an ironic comment about Christmas spending. By playing around with tape, almost anything can become musical.